Hello there, my name is Ossi Isborn and I'm the knowledge enthusiast and this video is meant to be um, a separate video, a video to the German unification video I did today. So if you haven't seen that, please follow the link in, this, uh, in the description and watch that first because maybe otherwise you don't know why i do this if you already have seen um, the video on the german unification then congratulations and thank you very much um, this is uh, as i said in the video a short and simple um, explanation or overview of um, the german government and why um, helmut kohl wasn't the leader in 1989 and 1990 and why um, Angela Merkel today is not the leader. I have to stress at this point um, the terminology might be a little bit confusing because effectively um, the Chancellor of Germany is more or less the leader of Germany. It is the person you most associate with um, the politics of the country. It is the person who mostly influences the politics in the country. But by legal definition, the Chancellor is not the leader and I will try to explain why. So at first, let us take a look at the um, political system of the United States. We see it here now. It is uh, pretty... I, I wouldn't say confusing. I, I, I wouldn't also say it is very simple, but it's... You see who is responsible for what. You see who is uh, in power, who is in charge, and who is... Um, yeah, the, the, the top person. And... Um, we also have the political system of the United Kingdom, where you see also uh, the king or queen is on top. You have the Supreme Court, you have the Prime Minister, you have the House of Lords and the House of Commons, and all of them together are responsible for the laws. And it's, it's also a pretty straightforward um, system. And now we have the political system of the Federal Republic of Germany and you see all these crossing lines. And all these crossing lines and why the Chancellor is not the leader of Germany have a very particular reason because history. As you might know, the German history is a little bit... hard to take, let's say so. Um, we have on, on the one hand, we have a very, very weak government doing the Weimar Republic and on the other hand, we have a dictator. So um, in an attempt to neither um, have the first nor have the second again, um, the German uh, public, I don't say, the, the German politics in uh, uh, accompanied by the Allied forces came up with a system that would um, on one hand prevent someone rising to too much power um, and on the other hand uh, provide a pretty strong government. So the first thing um, you need to know is the electorate, which is the voters. So everyone in Germany who is at the age of 18 or older um, for the Bundestagswahl uh, or the, the vote for the Bundestag is allowed to vote. Um, but for for some uh, like for um, your regional government, you can uh, at some regions be younger. So we have uh, the voters and we don't vote the president like um, in other countries that, uh, it may happen. We also don't vote the chancellor. What we uh, we vote on is election, that's the word. What we vote on is the federal diet, um, the parliament, the Bundestag. Um, this is 
what we vote on during a Bundestagswahl. Um, we also vote the state parliaments, but we do that um, separately in um, yeah, state parliament elections, um, which might have different names. Like here in Hamburg, it's the Bürgerschaftswahl, um, with, which means uh, Bürger is, is like citizen, um, and it's the um, citizens' representative um, uh, election, if you if you want so, um, because Hamburg don't have a state parliament uh, in in that sense. It has a Bürgerschaft, which um, has historical um, reasons, and we don't need to um, elaborate on that. Um, you might see uh, some of this in my upcoming video about the Hanseatic League. So, um, yes, we vote the Bundestag and we have two votes because the Bundestag consists of at least 598 um, uh, people who, who um, get a mandate and um, we have 299 voting districts in Germany. So we have two persons for each voting district that go to the Bundestag. The first vote is for a specific person of your region uh, perhaps who you vote on if this person gets the majority vote in your um, in your uh, district then this person gets a direct mandate to the bundestag the second vote is uh, uh, we vote on a list of people which um, in simple terms we vote on the party so, for example, I want to vote on the CDU, which is the Christ Democratic um, Union, which is the um, party that is in most power at the moment because they're in a coalition um, with the SPD, which is the second, uh, uh, or was the seven, uh, second most public um, party, because we have we have a system with various parties and not only two, and um, so. I want to vote on them and they have a list of names um, which my, may vary um, according to the region and um, according to how many votes they get uh, in percentage that's how many seats they will have in the Bundestag. If they get more direct mandates then they get um, second votes for the party then all the candidates that get a direct can, uh, a mandate can go to the parliament um, but they won't be able to send anyone from that list in. Um, which also may create so-called Überhangmandate or overlapping mandates, um, which means that in uh, reality we usually have more people in the Bundestag than the 598, um, which is the least um, there will be. So, what is the Bundestag or the Parliament? The Bundestag or the Parliament is more or less the single most important organization um, in the uh, uh, German political system because those are the ones who um, make the laws, who, uh, who also say how many money the, uh, the uh, um, the government has and uh, who also um, watches the government. So, um, as I said, uh, we want we don't want too much power in one hand. So, um, the parliament is responsible for um, watching the government, uh, watching their moves, watching what they do and preventing anyone from getting too much power there like if the chancellor now says uh want themselves to be a dictator this won't happen until the bundestag would um say yes which usually they wouldn't i mean it never happened since the second world war but i hope they wouldn't and um the uh, single most person within the Bundestag is the Bundestag's president, who, as you can see with the two here, is the second um, in, in the hierarchy of politicians. In Germany, he is on the second place, while the chancellor is on third place. This is because it's the, uh, the, the president of the Bundestag, the president of the organ that makes the laws, that watches the government, that also watches 
the um, federal council and that um, is part of the federal convention as you can see here which uh, elect the federal president so and uh, the parliament and the um, president of parliament are the uh, is the head of the legislative so that's already pretty much confusing um, to the federal council you have um, members from all 16 federal states of germany um, who send representatives um, according to their um, to their population so north rhine westphalia for example has the most representatives um, it's usually i think about three to six so the least you can have is a three the most you can have is six um, i will put it in the uh, info box right there which is smaller this time um, the the um, correct number and they also can uh, initiative uh, laws but they have uh, if, if they want something to be a federal law because they have their own uh, laws they can make for their uh, states if it is a state affair like school system for example um, then they um, they usually would formulate that law and then this formulation would go to the federal government who checks that law and if they are okay with it it goes to parliament parliament um, has a vote and if they vote yes then this won't be a law yet because um, even though the initiative comes from the federal council the federal council will have to um, to vote also on every law so because again no one has uh, uh, shall have too much power um, the parliament alone has not all the power um, every law the, pol uh, the parliament is deciding will have to go to the federal council and they also have to say yes and if they don't say yes and it is a law that they have to say yes then the law won't happen if it is a, is a it is a minor law which they don't have to say yes then it goes back to parliament parliament can overrule them and it is a law if the president signs but we'll come to that later now we have the federal government the chancellor is the head of the federal government and um in that position he is the or she in in, in uh, the now case like it's a chancellorette now and the chancellorette is um the head of the executive so um a little bit like the prime minister in great britain or the president in the united states but again with less power um this is not only due to the constitutional um, uh, thingies around it, it is also because the Chancellor um, has to be voted by Parliament. To be voted by Parliament, um, the Chancellor's party need to have either the majority vote in the Parliament, so they have to have over 50%, um, or they need a coalition which again um, right now we have a, a so-called great coalition because the two um, greatest parties um, have formed into a coalition and then they uh, they would usually have the majority uh, majority vote on the chancellor again the german public does not vote the chancellor and um, in theory it could happen that the party that gets the most votes does not also get um, to be uh, become the party with the chancellor because if others join in a coalition together and have more votes than you have all together then they could um, uh, vote their candidate for chancellor um, beyond the chancellor we have the federal government with the ministers um, so which are or organs of the executive and um, they also can uh, make initiatives for laws but 
similar to the federal council having to send their laws to the federal government, the federal government has to send their laws to the federal council, which has to check it. And if they approve, then it can go to the parliament, parliament votes, federal council has to vote again, like I said earlier, and the federal government has also to um, sign it after the federal uh, president signs it. So, and in some cases, like this review part here, you have the federal constitutional court um, will also check in if the law is constitutional, because um, we don't want things to happen that are not constitutional. Like, if the, <laughs> again, Second World War and Third Reich, uh, if we have the uh, Bundestag or the um, uh, Parliament voting for the Chancellor to be Chancellor on lifetime and dictator and some stuff like that, and the Federal Council uh, would also agree, and even the President would agree, then the Federal Constitutional Court wouldn't agree because that would be unconstitutional. Um, so we have a system with as you see, five major players that all control and check on and um, have some kind of power over each other. Um, in in theory, at least. In, uh, in reality, the Chancellor has the most political power because the Chancellor is defining the inner and foreign politics of the country, is responsible for... Um, the um uh for the actual governing for the actual executive for setting those laws in effect and um also is responsible for everything um but then we have now three organs with the federal council the federal diet and the federal government more or less on the same level with the chancellor being the single most person to have power with, uh, with two other organs who have in conclusion with all the people inside of it as an organ similar power. And then we have the federal president who is neither executive nor legislative nor judicative. The federal president is neutral and above all. Every federal president has to um, revoke or at least pause their um, party allegiance, so the current president Frank, Malta, uh, Frank Walter Steinmeier is uh, former uh, uh, party, uh, his former party was the SPD, um, but at the moment he was voted to become the federal president, he um, uh, paused his, his allegiance to the SPD because the, the uh, president has to be neutral and as an organ also is neutral. The federal president nominates the chancellor, appoints and dismisses uh, as uh, the, the federal ministers as well as uh, he dissolves the parliament if needed or if um, a new parliament has been voted. And the president of the federal council is also the vice president uh, of the state even though they rank on, as you see, fourth place. Um, and the federal pr uh, president has some rights. Uh, in, in the video I said he is only representative like the Queen of England uh, or Great Britain, which is not entirely true. Um, you see in the Weimar Republic the president had somewhat a lot of power and um, too much power for some, which is why the federal president of Germany has less power with um so this is by design um with the weimar republic in mind so um but he also is not only representative as i said he has to sign every law and he has to um make sure that the um, constitutional process of uh, a law becoming a law has been followed like all the back and forth all the um, voting uh, and so on and so on. So he has to make sure everything is in order before um, a law becomes a law. He also has, re um, has the duty 
to to act politically if needed um usually the president is is um outside uh, is, is outside of the the day-to-day -day politics and um will not interfere with the day-to-day -day politics but he has the right and the duty uh, and the duty to do so if needed and also the president has reserved rights and the veto rights so um even if the um, constitutional process is followed with the law and everything is in order he can still say no he can say i do not sign this um which actually might have happened i guess i'm i'm not entirely sure i think there was something quite recently um but i'm as i said i am not sure um i will put it in the info box as well um but yes and in the hierarchy of things the federal president is number 1 this is the head of state this is the single most important person on paper with the president of the bundestag um, being on second the chancellor being on third the president of the federal council being on fourth and the president of the federal constitutional court being on fifth place there might be places behind that but um, these are there, there is no official hierarchy this is but but this is what um, everyone agrees on in germany so um i hope I, I i could give you some some insight um in in the um political system as i said it's very simplified it's it's very um it's it's only scratching the surface i i could tell you much much more but this video already is 20 minutes long and um, I don't even know what music I could put under it to to stretch it to that length. Um, and I'm sure I might here and there have leave, uh, left things out that might be um, important um, or even, even misrepresented things. But now you get a grasp why um, the chancellor is not the leader of germany because the leader of germany by constitution is the president um, even though the chancellor has the most political power and um, yeah and and uh, why we have so much confusion in this graph and why we um, all of these organs within the um, parliament and and within the whole government um, is has come to be like i said it has res um, historical reasons and uh, if you want to learn more then uh, do so <laughs> um yeah i was also born if you want to um uh, if, if you like the video, please like and subscribe. If you don't like, please li uh, dislike and maybe tell me why you dislike. And if you like, maybe tell me why you liked. Um, if you want to see more um, of this kind of videos, uh, tell me. I uh, will do my best. As I said, I'm not an expert on, on anything. Um, I have a pretty good understanding of politics, but I am in no way um an, an expert um as well as in history or in video games or something um but yeah stay tuned for the next video which still will be on the hanseatic league and uh, until then i wish you a good night and bye bye ciao